So let's talk a little bit about oleolevy, because I think this is a really interesting topic that, honestly, people are kind of forgetting about here and there. I've been kind of bringing up Yolevi a little bit when talking about the Utica Comets and talking about players that they have that have been really, really good. So let's dive into a little bit of a deeper discussion on oleolevy, because I think that this is honestly a player that we can be excited for for the pretty short-term future, if I'm gonna be honest. So why exactly am I bringing this up? Well, I'm bringing this up because in a lot of these Utica Comets highlight packages, you can really see Yolevi contributing to a great deal of Utica offense. He's the guy who's in the Utica zone, sending out those long stretch passes up to Reed Boucher and Gold Dolbin and all those guys, and getting some pretty nice looking assists, pretty much in the same fashion that Elias Pedersen had a crazy good assist on Brock Besser's second goal last night against the LA Kings. Yolevi is doing pretty much the same thing. He's going back, he's retrieving pucks, and he does a really good job at always knowing where his surroundings are. Yolevi in these small highlights throughout the season so far has really had his head up. He's been using that shoulder check before he picks up the puck very effectively, and he's been throwing out these long stretch passes that find the mark. Honestly, it's kind of weird seeing this success from him this early, but, you know, I probably should be willing to see it. He was drafted fifth overall, right? But right now, Olio Levy has five assists in eight Utica Comets games. Last season, he had 13 points in 18 Utica Comets games. So right now, in his entire AHL tenure, Yolevi is at 18 points in 26 games, which is a .69 points per game. That's pretty nice. Now, let's go over to Cam Robinson on Twitter here, because he made a post yesterday about Ole Yolevi, talking about how Yolevi has played at a .69 point per game pace in the AHL. These are some other similarly aged defenders with a minimum of 25 games played, to produce around that level in the past decade. Some of the guys included P.K. Subban, Tori Krug, Ryan Ellis, Sammy Votnin, Sammy Niku, Tyson Berry. Obviously, that's a really good list of company to be involved in and to be even in the same sentence as. So Ole Ulevi, as a guy who is producing to a similar rate at these guys, honestly is looking pretty good. But obviously, there are some stinkers in that list as well. If we take a look at the screenshot, you got some pretty notable names. Sebastian Ajo, the defenseman on the Islanders, comes to mind. Vatanen is there, Krug, Niku, CC, Rasmus Anderson, Jason Demers, who isn't too bad. But then you have a few other guys who aren't necessarily up to pace too, like Brandon Gormley, Vyacheslav Voinov, Tim Erickson, twice actually, so overall, it's a pretty nice list of company to be involved with, especially around the guys like Ellis, Tyson Berry, Travis Dermott, Anthony D'Angelo. So I think at this point, it's really evident that Yolevi is at least going to be an NHL player by the time 2021 rolls around. He should be a full-time NHLer. But the level as to what he can succeed at is definitely higher than what most people, I believe, would think. I labeled Yolevi as a guy who, in my opinion, maxes out as a top four guy who could probably contribute 35 to 40 points on the year in a prime-like scenario. I don't really see him getting more points than that. He's always been more of a two-way guy for me. Sure, he produced a lot at the World Juniors and with the London Knights and everything, but that London Knights team was stacked with Marner, Dvorak, and Kachuk, and that World Juniors performance was stacked with Poliarvi and Laine. So... Obviously, I would be lying if I said that a lot of Yolevi's production was because of him. A lot of that does have to do with the players that he was playing around, and even today, that's kind of the case. Reed Boucher is leading the AHL in goals, and Berchi and Goldolbin are doing extraordinarily well too, so that definitely helps out the production for Yolevi, but... Again, it's the same kind of point here. You'd rather want to see the production than not see the production. And that, to me, is the most important thing here. The fact that Yolevi took a year off from playing hockey pretty much to fix his knee. This is his first stint back on his new knee. And he's at a pretty good pace of scoring right now. Five points in eight games isn't amazing, but it's certainly not bad in the slightest, especially for a 21-year-old defenseman who's only going to go up from here. Yolevi, in my opinion, if he didn't miss out on last year with the knee thing, 
he would have had his first NHL game played by now. He probably would have had two or three assists at the NHL level by now. And he should be in a position where he would be the first call up. Obviously, that's not the case because he did have to go through knee things, but it's just going to take a little bit more time. Yulevi, to me, is still a very legit and very good NHL prospect. Is he better than Kachuk? No, that's not even remotely close to being a discussion. But what are you going to do? You can't get mad at the guy for having a knee injury. That's not within his power. Sure, he had a mediocre second year in the OHL after getting drafted, but he bounced back on TPS after that, and his Utica stint is looking really good. I mean, it's comparable to Subban, it's comparable to Tyson Berry, and the biggest thing is that these guys are offensively productive players. Subban and Berry can get points like crazy, and Yulevi is producing at the same rate that they did at the AHL. I think that's pretty good for an Ole Levy who most of us dub as a two-way guy who's not necessarily going to be a super highly productive point producer. So Ole Levy, in my opinion right now, is doing really well, and I can't wait to see when he eventually suits up with the Canucks because you know that's going to happen this year if an injury does occur, which, I mean, the Canucks only have, like, two injuries right now, which is crazy because it's literally Halloween, so... Yeah, we hope that the luck can continue, but at the same time, if Yulevi gets a shot, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Hope you enjoyed this video. Social Dash Rules 99, and bye.